the freedom that our civilization has nurtured and the faith that has nurtured our civilization. In celebrating the IPA, we celebrate its calling, which is to support and sustain the public culture which has shaped our country and influenced so well the wider world. It was in the Garden of Eden that Adam and Eve could do almost as they pleased. But freedom had its limits and its abuses, as this foundational story makes only too clear. And yet without freedom, we can hardly be human, hardly be worthy of creation in the image of God. From the Garden of Eden to the Exodus, Athenian democracy, the Roman Senate, Magna Carta, the Glorious Revolution, and American independence, the story of our civilization is the story of freedom and our struggles to achieve it. The Western canon, the literature, the poetry, the music, the history, and above all, the faith, without which our culture and our civilization is unimaginable. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you is the foundation of our justice. Love your neighbour as you love yourself is the foundation of our mercy. Faith has weakened, but not, I'm pleased to say, this high-mindedness which faith helped to spawn and which the IPA now helps to protect and to promote. John, you've done very well with just 20 staff. Remember what Jesus of Nazareth did with 12. <laughs> and one of them turned out to be a rat. <laughs> and I want to assure you that the coalition will indeed repeal the carbon tax, abolish the Department of Climate Change, abolish the Clean Energy Fund, will repeal Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act, at least in its current form. We will abolish new health and environmental bureaucracies. We will deliver $1 billion in red tape savings every year. We will develop Northern Australia. We will repeal the mining tax. We will create a one-stop shop for environmental approvals. We will privatise Medibank. Uh, we will trim the public service. And we will stop throwing good money after bad on the NBN. So, ladies and gentlemen, That is a big, fat yes to many of the 75 specific policies you urged upon me in that particular issue of the magazine. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch is probably the Australian who has most shaped the world. Through the 45 million newspapers that News Corp sells each week and the one million subscribers, one billion subscribers to news-linked programming. Rupert Murdoch has sometimes changed his political allegiance, but he's never changed his fundamental principles, at least since the mid-70s. So those have been greater personal responsibility, smaller government, fewer regulations, and support for open societies that don't build walls against the world. For our guest of honour, as for anyone deeply steeped in reporting, experience trumps theory and facts trump speculation. His publications have borne his ideals, but never his fingerprints. They've been sceptical, stoical, curious, adventurous, opinionated, yet broad-minded. He's influenced them, but he's never dictated to them. But above all else, he's one of us. Most especially tonight, he's a long-serving director of the IPA, as was his distinguished and celebrated father, Sir Keith. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a special night. This is a night to renew our commitment, to renew our faith. In 100 years' time, all of us will be gone. But, please God, 
not the ideals and the great causes for which we stand. May it be said of us that we have passed the torch of freedom to our successors, which we do by supporting an organisation that's bigger than any of us and that can outlive all of us.